Okay, welcome to the first lesson of uh, Unit 2. So uh, we're going to actually start off um, with something that's not too, too challenging. It's just adding, subtracting polynomials. It's just like terms. But um, one thing we want to add in here is, is just this idea of equivalence. Uh, we want to see if we just want to start talking about the idea of equivalence and how do you kind of verify equivalence. Um, and so the only way two things are equivalent if, is if they're exactly the same. And so we have to just look and see if things are the same. But there is a way to check if it doesn't look, if it looks like they're the same, but we want to prove that they're not. Um, so that it's, it's very hard to actually determine something's equivalent, but it's very uh, straightforward to actually determine something's not. And so we'll look at here in this question. So for the first one, if we actually sub in uh, f of 0 for the for x, we get 5. Uh, if we sub in 0, these two numbers go away, we end up with 5. If we sub in g of 0, we get negative 5. So that means that these two can't possibly be equivalent. Uh, for b, if we sub in f of, um, if we rearrange it and, uh, and combine like terms, we get 7x minus 6. Um, g of x is 7x plus 2. And then those are not equivalent because they're not the same thing. So f of 0 would be negative 6. g of 0 would be plus 2. The next one, if we sub in f of 0, we get 8. The other one, g of 0 is 9, so these two are not equivalent either. Okay, So that really just leaves us our last one. Our last one we actually have to, to rearrange and solve for g of x. And I put f of x there, but it should be g of x. Um, and g of x is indeed 18x minus 24, and that's the same thing as f of x. Okay. Some definitions. A polynomial is an expression consisting of variables, uh, coefficients, involves only operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication. You can't have any non-negative non ex integer exponents. So you can't have any, sorry, any negative integer exponents. Uh, like terms. Uh, like like terms are terms that have the same variables and powers, and the coefficients don't need to, to match. We can simplify polynomials by combining like terms. So a couple examples uh, we're just going to look, and we're actually going to try to verify that our answers are equivalent. That's not actually going to verify that they're completely equivalent, because that's the only way to do that is to make sure that they're algebraically the same. But we're going to do a quick check to just to see. So here we can actually drop the brackets on the first part because th there's nothing in the front. And we can drop the brackets in the second part. So what I like to do is when for combining like terms, I like to group the terms because I'm going to write this line anyway to drop the brackets. So I like to start to put the like terms under each other. So you'll notice I'll do that throughout. 3x squared and x squared is 4x squared. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. And 5 plus 3 is 8. For the second one, uh, we can drop the brackets on the first part. And then when we drop the brackets on the second part, we actually have to, we have to expand that negative sign in. And so we get negative x squared plus 6x and minus 5. And so by lining them up like this, you can actually see x squared minus x squared cancel out, negative 6 plus 6x cancel out, and 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And the last one, um, we do have to expand it again. Uh, so we get 2x squared. So 2x times x is 2x squared because there's 2x's. Uh, so there's a 2 and then 2x's as well. And then 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. And 3x squared times negative 3 is negative 9x squared. And so notice we put the negative 9x squared down with the 2x squared because those are going to be put together. And so when we put them together, we lead off with the x cubed and then negative 7x squared and then minus 6x. Now verifying their equivalent, like what we can do here is, is sub in on the top line. We're just going to sub in an easy number to sub in. And so in that case right now, it's 0. So if we sub in 0, we actually get... Uh, 5 here in this bracket, and then 3 in this bracket, so we get 8. 
On the bottom, if we 7, 0, we get 8 as well. This doesn't verify for sure that they're equal, because, like, you'd have to sub in every number possible to make sure. But it it is a nice check. Uh, it is a nice check to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. Zero is maybe not the best number, like, but we don't want to go too overboard here. Um, this does not verify that they're equivalent. It just it's just a really nice check. For B, uh, if we sub in sub in one, we actually get one minus six plus one. One's a really easy number because we just can add the coefficients, and then minus one minus six plus five. So that gives you a negative four minus zero, which is negative four, and that's what that's what the final answer is as well. So again, that just makes sure that it's true for when you when x is one. It has to be true for when x is anything. But you can't. But it is. It does actually tell you though if these are not coming out the same that you must have made a mistake. Remember, we don't have to prove that they're equivalent. We're just checking our work here. Um, and so it might be easier just to check to make like double check your work, make sure you didn't make a mistake. But this is a way to actually see if they're equivalent. Checking a single point does not guarantee the top and the bottom are the same, but it's a nice quick check. Especially if you got something different, you know that you made a mistake. Okay, some practice questions for that. Um, number nine just is a bit challenging, but it just shows that um, two functions can share two points, but they're not necessarily equivalent. So if we sub in x is 0 and x is 2, we get the same y values, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're equivalent. Sub in x equals 1, and you'll see. Okay.